welcome to the Toffee Blues, your talk for all things Everton, and welcome to the match preview segment for Everton versus Wolves on Tuesday, the 12th of January. Everton go into this on the back of a 2-1 win over Rotherham, which required extra time. We made heavy weather of that one, and it's a very quick turnaround for this next game. We've got Wolves coming up. Not never an easy team to play against to start with. We'll start with Owen on this one. Owen, how do you feel going into this off the back of what we've just witnessed on Saturday? I should. I, I hope it doesn't have any bearing on the game on on. on is it Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. So I, I see them as two different games. Rotherham was a sort of a gnarly FA Cup third round tie that. It looked like about sixty percent of the players didn't even want to be on the pitch. Never mind, sort of go through. We get we got through anyway. We have to forget about that and focus on the Wolves game where we're going to need to dig in and just and just try and grind up results out like we have been because they're they're an awkward team to play against. They're not the most free flowing in terms of sort of styles that we're talking about. So it's going to be another one where we try and get the first goal and just and see the game out. I feel. By the we just we need to get back to just the way we have been playing before the West Ham game, and I feel like we can definitely win this one. It's it's a winnable game, but it's going to be a difficult game, and I feel like the key is the first goal. Yeah, definitely, and against these guys, and definitely given the way we are as well, I think we have to score first here. Mike, how how, how are you feeling about this one? Are you, are you confident that we can turn things around? Um, I think I think pre West Ham, you know, it, it wasn't a game that I'd, I'd looked at and thought, you know, I, I don't see anything other than than three points. To be honest, we were in such good form. Uh, the West Ham game is still a bit, a bit of a puzzle now as to how we we didn't approach that game a bit differently and come away with the win. You know, um, we were so we were so poor in that game. Obviously, the Rotherham game, like like Owen said, then hopefully it doesn't have any kind of bearing on things. You've got Calvert Loon and Mitchell Allison to, to bring back in, which is a positive. Um, but I'd, I'd, I'd be inclined to, to maybe go back to playing the, the four centre halves across across the back, to be honest. Put Godfrey back at left back. So, you know, Luca Dean's come back and played an hour. Um, he's, he's, he had a bad injury. He's come back really quickly. We need to manage that correctly. Um, we've got the pace of Adama Sayori to look at as well. You know, Ben Godfrey, we know, is quick and can, and can you know, deal with him. Better, I think, than probably Luca Dean can. And maybe Better than anyone on our team can. hundred percent. You know, Luca Luke, Luke Dean, he, he shows yesterday he was rusty, which is totally understandable. You know, the kid, the kid, um, what we said before, all of Sunday was, was going past him at will at times with that pace. So we struggled and, and we understand why. Um, so maybe Holgate back in at right back, Godfrey back at left back, me and Akeem, two centre halves, and, and just try, you know, try and play the way we were playing. You know, before the West Ham game, um, again, like Owen was saying, first goal is pivotal. We can nick the first goal. I think I think we win the game. But these, you know, they're a good side. They're not, not the same side without Jimenez. Jimenez is is, is always a real threat. Um, he always scores against us. He does. He does. You know, and obviously we wish him all the best in his recovery as well after what was a horrific injury. Um, but you know, as I say, first goal, first goal, pivotal, and we can get that then I expect us to get back to winning ways, to be honest. Yeah. Well, it's always the way with Everton. I find we score first, we win. We don't, we don't win. That's the, that's the truth for the majority of the Premier League games this season, I feel. There's, there's lots of games, especially with no fans being in attendance, that the, 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 the tight games and often a goal decides it. And you see lots, lots of games that are sort of nil-nil on the hour and it's that who, who blinks first and gets the win and goal? It's the it's the way it is. I feel we have to sort of. I want a positive start to go out and get, get after them and then get that goal and then see where we go from there. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Obviously, it's a going to be an interesting fixture. I mean, Wolves are a very difficult team to play against, and they're really well defensively drilled, which is like I think that we always find it hard to break these kind of teams down. I think. Terry, how do you see us finding a way of breaking these down? I don't know, to be honest. It's um, I, I, th- I don't think, you know, touching on what Mike said, I don't think we're going to go back to the four centre-backs across the back. I think they, it'll be really telling now who the centre-back partnership is because 
I think Dean and Coleman will start. I think they're his first choice fullbacks, and Dean will be crucial if he can, you know, if he can get that rust off him from the Rotherham game and get back into, you know, into decent form. Dean and Richarlison down the left makes us a completely different outfit. And with James Rodriguez on the right, we've got our creative players back now. So we might see a case of, even though, you know, we're the away team, we have a lot more of the ball. We try and break balls down. They try and hit us on the break and do us on set pieces. The same way we were playing in December, they might do a, a, a version of that against us. But it's, it, we saw at the beginning of the season, you know, when, when James and Dean and Richarlison are all on form, it's just like, you know, shooting fish in a barrel for Dominic Calvert-Lewin, the amount of chances they were making for him. I think that's the team we're going to go back to now. We're going to try and become this, you know, creative attacking team. And it's just about the individual defenders and defensive players sort of doing doing their jobs, yeah. Like, who he has at centre-back, like I said, then I don't know because I think long-term, I think Godfrey or Keane... Godfrey and Keane, excuse me, could be the partnership. But, you know what I mean? It demands selection, the way he came on and played, you know what I mean? He, he, you know, he's been playing really well and he played really well against Rotherham. So that'll be the most interesting thing. I don't think we're in any danger of not seeing these players if they fit the Deans, the, the Hameses. Obviously, we'll have um, Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin back. It's more a case of who plays in the other positions, who's going to play in midfield. I think it's pretty safe to say. I think personally that it'll be to Corre Davies and Sigurdsson because one of the one of Davies and Gomez has got to play, and it's the minute it's still Davies because to, I've, not, I've not seen a drop off in a player quite like Andre Gomez from being our most important midfielder two years ago when he was on loan to being a waste of time. Now doesn't do anything, doesn't create, doesn't tackle, doesn't do, you know just runs up to the opposition player and stands in front of them and doesn't block anything. So I think um, I think the team is pretty easy to predict, apart from a centre back, personally. Yeah, I think for me, I'm kind of on Mike's side to an extent. I'm not sure about the Coleman Holgate thing on one side, but I think Godfrey at left back to stop Traore or one of their wingers who are very mercurial from getting any joy would be a very good move. Possibly, or, or we could see. Um, you know, despite Yeri Mina playing well, we could see Godfrey at left centre back just to like stop that cut in, you know, to go with him. Um, but I think it, teams who do this against Wolves, who play, who change their team up to accommodate for Traore, they just move into the other wing. We did it last year. We played two left backs um, in that awful game after lockdown. In the first lockdown, we had Baines at left centre back and Luca Dean at, le- you know, left wing back, yeah. Never way round it was, I can't remember, but basically two left backs on the pitch and they just put Traore on the other side. I refu- <laughs> I, I refuse to believe that we weren't sort of in the pub and the eat out a half out scheme before that game because we were abysmal. That was the worst <laughs> performance of last season. It was dreadful. Mm-hmm. Don't think we left our own half. Oh, well, I, remember, I remember that really vividly, to be honest, but I don't know. Oh, I think, yeah. I think- it's one of them. I've seen Luca Dean get absolutely rinsed by Traore so regularly since they've both been playing in the same league. It's like, as good as yeah. Dean is going forward, I think he's, he's not that good defensively and we could be in trouble if he has a bad game. The thing, thing is, though, if, if you play Godfrey at left-back, they just move, they'll just move Traore to the other side, no full well, because they're used to the to teams doing these little... You know, tweaks to their team to accommodate Traore, and it the, all they'll do is go right then, fair enough. And then, then we've got less creativity down the left. So, what I'd do, I, I, what I expected to do is play a back four, a, a, a normal back four with both full backs, and then whichever side Traore's on, if he's causing us a problem, I oh, think he goes God, over there. I've got freely the start at centre back, or if he doesn't, if he's if he's rampaging down the, the left, our left wing, you might see him come on. Same way he did against Rotherham, or if it's the other side, you might see Godfrey or even Holgate go down. If if Traore is on the other side, you could see Coleman come off for one of the centre backs. Uh, I know Holgate's not quite the same as Godfrey, but you know he's a better defender, I think, than Coleman. So okay. I think it's one of those in play changes that Carlo makes rather than from the start. Where you, you say I, I can definitely I can definitely still see Luca Dean starting the game. But I could see Holgate starting right back over Coleman just because 
of the fact that we want to keep it tight in this game, we don't want to concede. And Holgate's been been decent and right back. I, I can, I would feel more comfortable with Holgate playing than Coleman in this one. Person, I, I actually, I always agree with that. Owen. Uh for me, it's not just a case of Adama Traore these days. There's also like Pedro Neto who's been excellent this season. He's a really good player. He's a much better player than Traore. Oh, he's a much better player, but obviously he's not got the speed and the strength of him. But he's a very gifted player. But they've got a threat on either side, so we need to be mindful either way. I just think Holgate's Holgate's old Godfrey a fullback would be a better defensively than Coleman. He's a bit of a winger, but Daniel Podent is a good player as well. Just... I think he's injured, Podent. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'll just have a quick check. Uh, yeah, he's out for a few weeks. He's not going to play, but it'll be probably be Traore and Neto on the flanks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they they've changed to a back four these days, Wolves, just because of the fact that Jimenez is injured, Joss is no longer there, so you need to get as many creative players on the pitch as possible. Otherwise, they they'll just be really blunt. So I I feel like there's a way of winning this game, but I wouldn't just sort of throw everything at it and let them hit us on the break because I feel like we'll be we'll that's be that's how they like to play. I think. Yeah, they're a counter-attacking team, so limiting their counter-attacking ability. I think the core is really important in this one, in this one to sort of win yeah. the ball when they're trying to transition it. Yeah, definitely. For me, the, the big thing for us is, like I think, they're very well defensively drilled. We've got to try and break this down. Uh, do these players have it in them to find a way? I mean, we saw that they were capable of it earlier on in the season. Obviously, we're a bit more depleted, but what can see? I, me see is- I'll take a different approach to this one because of the fact that if we if we sort of sit ten yards deeper and let them have the ball, I feel like they'll really struggle to break us down in this one. And we've got the pace with sort of Calvert Lewin, Richarlison on the break, even play Wobi or Hammers. We've got the ability on the break. I think it's just about. I feel like we there's a lot more joy to be had for us counter attacking them than it is for us to just knock the ball around and see if we can break them down. Because I feel like they'll be really difficult to do that against. Because I, I just don't feel like the moment we've got that sort of confidence to do that to teams. Yeah, I think for me, we're relying on some players who I don't personally think are professionally motivated. You know, your Gomez's, your Bernards, your. Uh, Tom Davis, even I know he's not on a fat wedge like the other ones, but he's still not giving enough for me. Uh, you know, relying on some of these players to turn up, whether it's from the start or off the bench, and I just don't trust some of them. Like to find the way, I think we need to get more. We do need to bring in a few more players, but I think we need to get the most out of what we've got. So, what would you go with in the midfield, Owen? Yeah, uh, Davis and Decore. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd play all us in here over Andre Gomez. Um, so the weather's <laughs> left. Davis and Decore. Daddy, would you second that one? Davis Decore is the sort of two defensive mids. Yeah, absolutely. Like you just there's just no case to be made for playing Andre Gomez um, alongside Decore. Um, I think. We might see Sigurdsson. It depends. Um, but I've just had a thought then. We could have Iwobi on the right with um, Hamas. Yeah, I didn't think of that. So I think that might be more likely, but I don't know. He seems to like Sigurdsson deep, doesn't he? So I, I would have Davies, Decore and Hamas, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Hamas on the right with Sigurdsson in the middle and have Iwobi on the bench. Yeah, we'll see what happens, but I think either way, going forward, I think our resources aren't too bad. We need more strength and physicality in that midfield is the concern. Well, Apart from well, Torre and, of course, Alan, who's injured, we need more in that midfield. We need, we need Alan back in another one to, to be really to be really a strong side because Al, Alan's really good, big fan of his. And then yeah, he's excellent. Someone else, I don't know, whether that be a goal scorer midfielder who, who can sort of push teams back and hassle them or another defensive midfielder who can win the ball back and just allow the attacking players to, to thrive. We, we need something that, that worries teams and on top of what we don't already have, which is Gomez doing his thing and Davis, who isn't really at the level. Yeah, 
Exactly. Mike, what would you go with for sort of lineup for this game? Yeah, I mean, I do think it's going to be Davis and the core is the two. Um, I'd be I'd be inclined to have, have Hammers. I wouldn't I wouldn't play Sigurdsson, but like you say, Carlos seems to like Sigurdsson. Uh, but I I put Hammers as the as the ten almost with a Wobi on the right, and the two of them can interchange anything quite nicely. You know, Wobi can come in centrally. Uh, I think you know, I know on the right, he yeah. wasn't great. Yeah, he wasn't great yesterday. He Wobi, but you know, we all know he's had a, a nice upturn in his in his form. Um, and, and I like I like what he does at Wobie. I like the way he comes inside. He, he's big and strong as well, you know. And we, and yeah. my 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 bugbear with Sigurdsson, you know, and as much as he's had a bit of an upturn in his in his uh, form as well, and I've said it on our podcast quite regularly. He, he, he tends to, you know, when, when he's pressing, he tends to when the ball goes past him, he then slides in when the ball's gone. So as a, as a, as a sort of uh, almost second line of defence behind Calvert Lewin, he's not. I think a Wobie's a little bit a little, got a bit more physicality. What he what he definitely has. Um, he grafts more than Rodriguez does. Yeah, hundred percent. So you see, you've got the option there of of, of him and and Hammers. Then obviously into changing if needs be. Obviously, Calvert Lewin will lead the line with the Charleston on the left hand side. Um, so it, it gives us the options as well. If, if we play a Wobie and Hammers, you've got the option to play a little bit more attacking if needs be. Or like like Owen said before, we could quite we could quite happily sit. You know, with with that uh, that back four and sit sort of ten yards deeper and sign play on the counter as well. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing is, I think you find like you, you throw the Charleston in there with those two. I think you can be flexible with all three of them. In what position do you take up? Mm. We're, quite, we're quite regular. Do you see your Charleston go to the right? Don't you? He'll he'll move across. The he gets on the left, or it will be on the left. Of course, and it's good to have that kind of flexibility. The better sides do, you know, they all interchange. And and like we were saying before about sort of Sayori and and you know if. If we try and go sort of like for like in terms of pace and power, he'll just sort of change sides. Well, we, we need to be needs to be like that. We need to sort of uh, work out puzzles and stuff that have been set as well. And and having those sort of five up up top, if you like, or, or sorry, those those four in in a in a diameter into changes would be would be uh, helpful. I think in this game, certainly. Uh, so yeah, interesting one, but you know. You can never age with this Everton side sometimes, but I'll just see it going. Predictions, guys. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Mike? I'm saying 1-0 Everton. I think we'll uh, we'll nick, nick the goal and then we'll and then we'll sit quite happily. Uh, I'll even just say a Wobie will score the goal, I think. Oh, well, that's... Uh, Seri? Probably go with 1-1 one, one as well. We've got two 1-1s one, and I'm going to check on Mike. Yeah. Predicted a win between us since the Brighton game, so I don't think she's surprised about that. Fair play, yeah. Well, if you <laughs> you keep keep on doing that, we've won most of the game since then, so I'll be happy, I'll be happy enough with that. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, use two on ones, and I'm gonna check a mic on that one. I'm gonna go with a one nil win. Hopefully, we low block the shit out of them, and you know we get over the line. But you never know. I mean, that seems how we got we got the results that way in December, and it was working for us. We might as well try it again. Until we're for fighting fit again, so I, I don't see why we shouldn't be taking that approach and hopefully getting the similar results to what we got throughout December. So, yeah, I'm going to go for a 1 0 win as well. Fingers crossed. Anyway, guys, let us know your predictions. Uh, we'll leave the preview with that. Drop us a comment below. Let us know how you see this game going, your predictions, and whatnot. Give this video a like and subscribe for more content. And until next time, thank you for watching on the Toffee Blues.